chapter 11. And it came to pass at the return of the year, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabal, but David tarried at Jerusalem. And it came to pass at eventide that David arose from off his bed, and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanliness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived, and she sent and told David, and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. That, and Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto him, David asked of him how Joab did, and how the people fared, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of food from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of the Lord, and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto the, his house, David said unto Uriah, Art you not come from a journey? Wherefore didst you not go down unto your house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in booths, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open field. Shall I then go into my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let you depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with his servants of the Lord, but went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set you Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire you from him, that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass, when Joab kept watch upon the city, that he assigned Uriah unto the place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people, even of the servants of David. And Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war. And he charged the messenger, saying, You, when you have made an end of telling all the things concerning the war unto the king, it shall be that if the king's wrath arise and say unto you, Wherefore went you so nigh unto the city to fight? Knew you not that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Abimelech, ere you, Besheth? Did not a woman cast an upper millstone upon him from the wall that he died at the best? Why went you so nigh the wall? Then shall you say, Your servant Uriah, the Hittite, is dead also. So the messenger went and came and told David all that Joab had sent him from her. And the messenger said unto David, The men prevailed against us and came out unto us into the field, and we were upon them even into the entrance of the gate. And the shooters shot by at the, your servants from the wall, and some of the king's servants are dead, and your servant Uriah, the Hittite, is dead also. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shall you say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease you, for the sword devoureth in one manner or another. Make your battle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage you him. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah her husband was dead, she made lamentation for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and took her home to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing but the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. All right, let's go back to verse 1. Now, we'll remember yesterday, 
God had delivered Shobach, the captain of the host of the armies of Hadadzer, over into the hand of David. And this, we're going to pick up this story, is, is going to be about David and Bathsheba. Now, Shobach means the entanglement, and Hadadzer is the mighty one, or the mighty helper. So, verse 1, And it came to pass at the return of the year, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried at Jerusalem. So, it's spring, time to go fight again. And the armies are coming out, and David sent Joab. Joab's the captain of the host of the armies of Israel and Joab means God is the father and David sent Joab and they've gone down him and the armies of Israel and they've destroyed the children of Ammon and Ammon is tribal or stands for the nations and they've besieged Rabbah this would be the, the, the city the capital city of Ammon and Rabbah means to be plentiful or bountiful and later jo Ra Joab will refer to Rabbah as the city of waters. Uh, but David, he stayed there in Jerusalem, in this place, the teachings of peace. Two, and it came to pass at eventide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the house, of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. David's up on top of his house walking, and this was a common thing to do back then, and that's why in Deuteronomy, there's actually even a statute that requires you to build a parapet wall around your rooftop so no one would fall off because back then the roofs would be uh, flatter than they, we built, the way we build houses today, at least in America. And he was up there walking around, and he's, and he's seen off the roof now. He's seen a woman. She's bathing, probably on her rooftop, and she's very beautiful. Verse 3, And David sent, and he inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So now David sent off, and he's trying to find out who she is. And someone tells him, This is Bathsheba. And Bathsheba means the daughter of the oath. And that's what Bathsheba is going to represent, is this daughter of the oath, or this daughter that comes from the marriage of the obedience to God's law, the word that God gave you in the beginning, the truth. And that she's the daughter of Eliam. Now, Eliam, what it means, God's people, or these people of God, the kinsmen of God. So, and that's what caused, that's who was given the oath. The wife of Uriah the Hittite. And Uriah means, my light is God. And he is a descendant of the Hittites. And the Hittites are descendants of Heth. And Heth means terror. So these are the descendants of terror. These who have, was given the law. But they do not obey. And we'll remember that's what those represented that the children of Israel went in to drive out. For and David sent messengers and took her, and she became in, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanliness, and she returned unto her house. So now David sent for Bathsheba by messengers, and she they brought Bathsheba to David, and she went to in unto David, and she's laid with David. And, and it says she was purified from her uncleanliness, and she may have been, and what this stands for is she had just come off her menstrual cycle, and now she was fertile. But, nonetheless, she's the wife of another man, and there's been a great sin committed here. Five. And the woman conceived, and she sent and told David and said, I am with child. So now, this wife of Uriah, is pregnant, and she sent and told David. Now we know what the law says. The law says they both should die for what they've done because they both have sinned. Six, and David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah, 
the Hittite, and Joab sent Uriah to David. So now David called his captain of his host, and he said, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And when Uriah seven was come unto him, David asked of him how Joab did, and how the people fared, and how the war prospered. So David's making small talk with Uriah, trying to butter him up. Eight, and David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of food from the king. So now your, David is telling Uriah, he says, Go to your house and wash your feet. And what this does is cleanse yourself from your journey, make yourself wash your feet, and go to your house. And he sent a mess of food after him because David wants him to go have a big party. Nine, but Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of the Lord and went not down to his house. So Uriah didn't do what David thought he might do because, see, David is conspiring in his heart still. He's got outside God's, God's kingdom and he's in the thoughts of evilness. Ten, and when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Art you not come from a journey? Wherefore did you not go down unto your house? So David's question, Uriah, he says, why didn't you go home? I, I mean, I sent you to home, but, and you just come in from battles and a journey. Why didn't you go home? Eleven, and Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in the booths. And my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open field. Shall I then go into my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. Now Uriah's telling David, he says, Israel and the ark and Judah and everybody's living in booths. Joab and all the armies of God are camped out in the field in the open. And you think I'm going to go lie with my wife and eat and drink and be happy? I won't do this thing. Twelve, and David said to Uriah, I'll tarry here today. Also and tomorrow, I will let you depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. So now... Uriah, he is going to stay in Jerusalem and wait because David's commanded him while David thinks and makes up a plan. David's got himself in a pretty bad situation. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. So now David's called Uriah back, and he's made him to eat and to drink and Uriah has had plenty of wine and he's become drunk David's conspiracy is to make Uriah drunk and knowing that in his drunkenness he will desire his wife and go back to his house but this is not what's going to happen and this is not necessary and, th and this represents what's done in the end how they are made drunk but and thinking they're going to go back and lie with their this, and this covenant is not what's going to happen. 14, and it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. So now morning time comes, and David finds out that Uriah didn't go home. He writes down a letter, and he sends it by Uriah's hand to Joab. 15, and he wrote in the letter, saying, Set you, Uriah, in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire you from him, that he may be smitten and die. So the, the letter that David sent to Joab says that he wants you to put Uriah here in the hottest part of the battle, that he can be killed. 16, and it came to pass, when Joab kept watch upon the city, that he assigned Uriah unto the place where he knew that valiant men were. So now Joab and the children of Israel have come out to battle against the children of Ammon. And they have, he has put Uriah now where the battle is the most fierce and where he knows very strong men are in the battle. 17. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people, even the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. So 
We see Uriah got killed in the battle. Joab put him where he knew he couldn't win. And David, by the orders of David, this is what David told Joab to do, and Joab followed the orders of the king. And now Uriah's dead. So now we have this a murder actually committed. And 18, then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war. So now Joab's going to send word back to David and make sure David understands that the deed is done. And he charged the messenger, saying, When you have made an end of telling all the things concerning the war unto the king, 20, it shall be that if the king's wrath arise, and he say unto you, Wherefore went you so nigh unto the city to fight, knew you not that they would shoot from the wall? So he's told his messenger now, Go tell the king what's happened, and, and when you're done, if he gets mad, it says, why'd you go so close to the wall? You knew they'd shoot from there. And this wall represents the defenses of the city. And these arrows these that they'll shoot from up there are the truths of God. 21. Who smote Abimelech, the son of Eryush Besheth? Did not a woman cast an upper millstone upon him from the wall that he died in the bez? Why went you so nigh the wall? Then shall you say, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So Joab's telling him, when you tell him what went on in the battle, and he gets angry and wants to know why they shot from the wall, and 21, we see here that this prophecy from the earlier, from the book of Judges, comes up. Abimelech, my father is king. And he's the son of Ereshabeth, and this is the one who would contend with shameful teachings. And we remember the story there in Thebes, this place that is made white, that the woman did cast this upper millstone upon Abimelech's head and killed him. Well, she didn't kill him, but it cracked his skull, and he told his man there to stab him, just like Saul did. See, God has a way of doing this over and over. It's like a continual time loop until you get it right. And to Bema, and this upper millstone she cast on his head represents the stone that grinds first. And that was the law that God gave. And there is no other covenant. 22. So the messenger went and came to told David all that Joab had sent him for. So now Joab's messenger, he's come to David and he's told him everything Joab told him. And the messenger said unto David, Then when men, the men prevailed against us, and came out unto us into the field, and we were upon them, even unto the entrance of the gate. The messenger telling David that the men of the city came out to fight, and we were beating them back right up to the entrance of the gate. So they had fought them all the way back to the gate. 24, And the shooters shot your servants from the, off the wall. And some of the king's servants are dead, and your servant Uriah, the Hittite, is dead also. So he's told him that, you know, the, the, the archers attacked us from off the wall. And some, uh, they've killed some of the, our men. And Uriah, he is dead as well. 25. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shall you say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease you. For the sword devoureth in one manner or another. Make your battle more strong against the city and overthrow it and encourage you him. So David's going to tell his messenger that Joab has sent now. Tell Joab not to worry about this. Don't let this thing make, make him mad. Because the sword, it devours in one manner or another. And that's the sword of war or the sword of God's word. It does devour. The truth does devour. He says, make your battle strong against the city and overthrow it. And he told the messenger to go encourage Joab, 26. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she made lamentation for her husband. So now Bathsheba has heard that Uriah has been killed in the war. And she's went and made lamentation for 
Uriah, though she's with child of another man. 27. And when the morning was passed, David sent and took her home to his house, and she became his wife, and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. And I see where this would make the Lord very angry. David has took God's law and thrown it out the window. But God's using David here, see. This is going to be a story. Because in the end, this, this Bathsheba is the, represents the words that God gave to the children of Israel. This truth, the law of God. And now, someone else has come to take her for their wife to themselves. And this would be an example of and the prophecies of the end time. All right, we're going to move on to chapter 12.